this is our introduction to stability. This is one of my favorite topics. It's just kind of a fun, a fun lecture. So we're going to, in, in this area of stability, we're going to talk about stability, the up and off stability for linear systems as well, and then VIBO stability. So in terms of stability, suppose we have this difference equation, x of t plus 1 is equal to a x of t, starting at some initial condition x naught. So we can see that, that our solution to this difference equation is given by this, x of t is equal to a to the power t times x is 0. And so if we look at the absolute value of this, the magnitude, so in other words, the initial condition could be negative or positive, complex, I suppose. So the magnitude of x of t is the, the ab absolute value of this, the magnitude of this, the magnitude of this product is the product of the magnitudes. So initial condition is where we start. So notice when t is equal to 0, a to the t is, no, is the value 1. So we start at, at the magnitude x of 0. And we basically have three possibilities depending on the magnitude of a, a to the power t. So we have these three possibilities. When a is greater than 1, the, the se sequence diverges. When a is equal to 1 in magnitude, the sequence remains constant. And when the, the magnitude of a is less than 1, the sequence converges. So we have those three possible combinations for the various values of a. And so stability is what we have when the magnitude of a is less than 1. And so we also have, in the discrete time situation, the system is stable when all the eigenvalues, that is when all the eigenvalues of the matrix A, have magnitude less than 1. Another way of saying that is the spectral radius of A is less than 1. So remember, the spectral radius is the magnitude, the largest magnitude of all the eigenvalues. Similarly, if we have a transfer function, the transfer function is stable when all the poles have magnitude less than unity, that is, less than 1, inside the unit circle. So. In terms of the stability of in the z plane of the pole locations, we have these different options. Okay, we have a number of different options, and so I have I have um, pole locations here. But the important thing is that as for a, a given set of poles, the response basically is associated uh, with the location, and so the, the closer we are to the unit to the uh, origin then the faster we have contraction, that is, the, the convergence. Likewise, if we have poles outside the unit circle, or eigenvalues outside the unit circle, the further away from the unit circle, the faster the divergence. Okay, And we can also get oscillatory type responses, and the, the re response, the oscillatory response depends on the angle the angle that the, that the poles make with respect to the re positive real axis. So those are some things that we have in terms of discrete time stability. In terms of continuous time stability, here is our different, differential equation, x dot is equal to ax. Again, it's unforced. And we have this initial condition. The solution to this different differential equation is e to the at times initial condition the magnitude, I can take the magnitude this way. In general, A could be complex. If A is complex, then it has a real part and an imaginary part. And the magnitude of E to the AT can be shown to be E to the alpha T, alpha being the real part. And so we have the three possibilities. If the real part of A is greater than zero, we get divergence. If the real part of A is equal to zero, we, we stay constant, and if the real part of A is strictly less than zero, then we get a convergence. So basically what this is saying is that my, in order to be stable, my eigenvalues or my poles need to be strictly in the left half plane, that is negative real parts. And so for, in the continuous time case, the system is stable when all the eigenvalues have negative real parts. A matrix that has a, that has all negative real parts for its eigenvalues is called a Hurwitz matrix. 
Otherwise, we can talk about stability of a transfer function, and that is all the poles are in the left half plane. So if we look at the response of a system associated with pole locations, you can see that if, I, if my poles are in the right half plane of my eigenvalues, I get divergence. So notice that I can get just a straight divergence like this, or I can get an oscillatory di divergence like this. And the further to the to the left we go, the faster the divergence. I'm sorry, further to the right we go, the faster the divergence. The further up we go in the imaginary direction, the faster the frequency. Okay, now here on the imaginary axis, that's when the real part is equal to zero. If I have poles at the origin, that gives me a constant response. Otherwise, the further up the imaginary axis I go, the faster the frequency of oscillation. In the right half plane, I get convergence, and I have the same kind of thing. The further to the left I go, the faster the convergence. So this axis basically gives me increased oscillatory frequency. This axis it, uh, determines the either the decay or the expansion. So this is our introduction to stability. We're going to move on to talk about something called the phase plane.